Hi, you might have seen some different ways of protecting your system against damage from plugging in your battery the wrong way. And one of the more popular methods on YouTube involves a P-channel MOSFET, a Zener diode, and a resistor in this configuration, which serves as an alternative to shot key and silicone diodes with the much lower resistance of the FET being able to handle many more amps before overheating. But what if I told you that with the same number of parts, you could build something 10 times more efficient, not only electrically, but also in space, especially as the current requirements of your system begin to creep above 10 amps. That's not all though. The circuit I'm about to show you lets you power your system on and turn it off just as easily with a logic level signal. And you can ditch those massive anti-spark XT90s too, because with two resistors and a capacitor, you can get the same, if not better, anti-spark functionality. So, let's get into it. The IC that controls this electrical magic is the NCV68261 from On Semiconductor, which comes in a 6-pin 2x2mm DFN, handles up to a 32 volt input, and can drive the gates of one or two N-channel MOSFETs in four different configurations. An ideal diode protecting against reverse current and polarity, a configuration just for reverse polarity protection, and a high side switch kind of add-on for either using a second FET. It's important to note here that even though you can use the EN pin in the standalone ideal diode and reverse polarity protection setups to turn the single MOSFET on and off, you might as well just leave EN connected to the unprotected input in. This is because an N-channel MOSFET with a zero volt gate source voltage, as in off, will still let current flow this way through the parasitic body diode, albeit worse. But fortunately for us, in the same scenario where the gate source voltage of the MOSFET is zero, it won't even let a single microamp through in the reverse direction, which is exactly what protects our system against reverse polarity in such an event. So yeah, you'll need two FETs to have a built-in power switch because this one facing this way blocks current flowing in the forward direction and this one still blocks current in the reverse direction, taking advantage of the fact that MOSFETs can conduct both ways when in the on state. Anyways, back to the design, how do you choose the right MOSFET for your application? Assuming you have a system to put this thing in, I want you to take the maximum current it will draw and multiply it by 7. That's the minimum current rating of the MOSFET that you'll need, okay? I know it sounds crazy, but just bear with me right now. Next, we need to make some voltage considerations for the switch. We're talking 6S LiPo or less, or 24 volt DC regulated supply or less. Okay, now take your power input's maximum voltage and multiply it by 2 if you're driving inductive loads such as electric motors, and by 1.5 if you have a low power system which expects less transients. That's going to be the minimum VDS maximum rating of your MOSFET, or the voltage between the drain and the source of it. It's also a smart move to stick to a minimum 35 volt rating for any other components using the battery as a supply voltage. But We'll talk about that later. So now we can go to DigiKey, go to the single FETs or MOSFETs section, and filter out results appropriately. By the way, make sure the gate source voltage of your MOSFET is plus or minus 15 volts or more. You need that. Okay, now we've got our FETs and hooked them up to the NCV68261 properly. But let's say we use one of the two high side switch configurations and we need some way to generate 5 volts outside of the main protection circuit to drive the EN pin of the NCV high and turn the main system on and off. And we could use an LDO since there isn't that much current that needs to be sourced here, but the LDO also needs to be reverse polarity protected. And for this, we can just use a normal diode. So that gives us 5 volts, and then we can give ourselves a way of disconnecting and connecting it from the EN pin with a small signal potentiometer, SPST or SPDT switch, or a toggle switch like this one which is push to turn on, push to turn off. Awesome! 
Now, if your system is high power and has lots of capacitance like my motor control system was, you'll also need three passive components to make the MOSFETs turn on a little slower so that they aren't bearing too much current on startup. Here's a basic schematic of what that looks like with the ideal diode plus high side switch mode. And while these two resistors can just stay at 10 ohms, the CG capacitor needs a little more consideration. For my system, which had about 1400 microfarads of low ESR aluminum electrolytic capacitance, I used a 47 nanofarad CG capacitor. But you might want to consider lower values like 22 nanofarads or even 1 nanofarad if you're expecting a lot less inrush current. It really depends on your system, but in general, the larger the CG capacitor you use, the slower the MOSFETs will turn on and the less of a current spike you'll have on startup, which is always a good thing. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and if you want more information about the circuit, there's links in the description, and in the next video, I'll be going through the schematic and PCB design of a motor controller board, which includes an anti-spark switch as you saw here. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. If you're looking for a more entertaining video from this channel, feel free to click right here and I'll show you my custom 1kg sumo robot which has insane amounts of power and traction. And as always, if you want to see my designs reach the market someday, Memberships and super thanks always help. Thanks so much to my two members, Asko Kalpi and Atogi Curry. Hey, do you want to build your own cool custom robot with custom PCBs and custom plastic and metal parts? Well, PCBWay can do all of that for you with super fast turnaround times and discounted prices. This order of three PCB designs and assembly of over 300 components arrived in just two weeks which is really awesome. So if you want to try them out, type in your favorite browser pcb.hastindustries.com or just this link to get $5 off your first order and help support the channel. Bye.